Kara. How are you, my friend? Oh, I am fabulous. It is gorgeous here in Tennessee today. Perfect 70-degree fall day. Um, Wish I was outside working, but I'm getting ready for something super fun with my family. How are you? How's this I'm so great. I have spent the week in South Carolina. So in Spartanburg, if you got, it's just outside of Greenville. A lot of people heard of Greenville. Uh Um, I got to speak at a conference there to small businesses. And it's like most of the people I knew, but there were a few people I'd never connected with. And we had weavers and we had um, photographers and it was just you know when you're in a room, yeah, with right. your peop- your people, your people, like it's all people that get what you're going through. And right. um, I was able to share a little bit, and I love any time I get a chance to encourage. So I've had a great week, and I get to finish with you. We're on week 23, are we not? Yes, 23 episodes down. We have a really fun one today. We have an artist with us today, so Miss Daria Ibert. But we will bring her on here in just a little bit. So, how about we get into our show today? Yeah, let's get going with our intro. Oh my goodness. Yay! Yes, it's going to be a great show. You guys tuning in, make sure you tag your friends, put in the yes. comments, let us know what your questions are. We're so glad you're here. Um, we are here every single Friday at 12 o'clock central, 10 o'clock Pacific. And actually for our guest, I believe she said it was 7 p.m. PM so, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure you are um, showing up. And if you can't, cannot watch us live, don't forget that you can go to bloomtvnetwork.com and you can watch all 23 episodes. You do not even have to subscribe for that. The, all of the replays are always available. And we are so grateful that you show up every week to be on this journey with us. Yes. I see in the chat right here. Hello to Donna, to Patsy, Tasha, Rachel. Oh. And there's some other people on here too. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Um, Dion, last week we learned a lot and about a topic I know I didn't <laughs> know anything about. We learned all about Ikebana and that art of floral arranging. Um, Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? I found her to be, first off, I think we'd be friends because yes. <laughs> she would she would calm my chaos by oh, just right? walking into the room. It was like, Yekarina, Yekarina, I believe I'm saying that correctly. Um, she just has this like ground, she's like a grounding pad. So mm-hmm. if there's, I feel like if there's anxiety or tension in a room, Yakarina is the one that you want to go stand near. And just, she just had a way of speaking and she's an eloquent teacher and educator. I I love her videos on Bloom TV. Um, Mm -hmm. But if you guys missed that show, you can watch the replay. I was going to tease you and say, I know you did your whole little, you did it, right? Like you did a little Ikebana this week, but I know how busy you are. (laughs) No, she didn't. (laughs) No, no, I didn't get to this week. But, you know, definitely on the agenda to do when things calm down a bit. And I see Anna is in our chat. Hi, Anna. Anna, we miss, miss you. you so much, Anna. Um, Anna is going to be, obviously, she's not on with us today. Right. Um, so we just want to send her good wishes and, and that uh, she has a wonderful weekend as well. Yes, absolutely. So let's play you a video from last week's show. Let's do it. Those who come from floral art background, quite yeah. often they used to work in very quick. Yeah. And they really make a point like, oh, I am quick. You know, like, I am good. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, you know, I don't want to disappoint it's them. Not a race. So it's not a race learned. to win. <laughs> That's a great point. You know, we're not, we're not in, a, in a competition here. We're not hurting anywhere. It's about you and what you feel and you discover. Like I give uh, sketching classes to my uh, students in my Ikebana club. Um, so every month we do some sketching, botanical sketching, so that they can have some time with the flower, just one to one, like. I, I here I just wow. got this little seed bud, right? A seed oh, bud from hibiscus, and I didn't see it until I cleared off all the leaves. Uh-huh. 
This yeah. texture is beautiful and it yeah. has such a wonderful shape. So if you try to sketch it, just, you know, spend 10 minutes and then just try to draw it, you will find out that, oh, actually it has the outer layer of small leaves and then there is the inner layer and then inside some, and then every tiny flower, like forget me not, it's so complex. Okay, so watching her and, am I frozen or is it just me? It's just you and you're not frozen to me. Okay, I'm looking at myself on the screen, you all. We're live, of course, and I, I'm not moving on the screen. So um, just checking in, as long as you guys can see me. Hello, everybody, I see you. But what I found to be fascinating with her is that she focuses on the negative space. And mm -hmm. that's part of it. When she said the water, mm -hmm. like we don't show the water in a bouquet, like unless right. it's in the glass face, but the water is actually part of the system, part of, part of the arrangement. It has just as much input as right. the the center floral. So that was totally fascinating. I, I loved every single bit of it. I wore my irises today though, <laughs> in honor of our next. Look at these. Iris, yes. I iris They're theory. turquoise irises, you all. And those of oh. you who know, my business name is the turquoise iris. These were given uh -huh. to me as a gift. Um, sweet, sweet couple brought them to me at this conference. And so in honor of our next guest, I wore turquoise irises and you're going to find out why that is so significant. Yes. So today we have Miss Daria Ibert that is going to be with us today. Let's bring Daria on. Hello. Hello. Hello, friend. Hi, everyone. Hi. So exciting to be here today with you from little, little tiny country where I am. Super excited. Yes. In Estonia. So Daria is an Estonian Russian artist. She's based in Amsterdam. She's in Estonia right now. Um, she has been making art since 2006. It took her 12 years um, before she dedicated herself to one particular flower, which is the iris. And I cannot wait to hear why. Um, and her work aims to unfold feminine, femininity and eroticism rooted in nature. And I'm so excited to talk with you today and show everyone your beautiful paintings. Welcome, Daria. Thank you so much, Kara. Thank you, John. Welcome, Daria. I was telling her before we went live that when I first became a bloom expert, I saw there was another artist on here who had her videos. And I went, oh, that's my person to start with. So <laughs> before I watched Kara's and before I watched Anna's videos, I went straight to yours. And I was fascinated by your use of the, mono, the monochromatic. You are using essentially... In your irises, you, and I'm going to let you describe it better, um, but you see, we have people saying, Dari, your artwork is stunning. Yeah. We already have that, so they're already taking it. Um, you use one color with variation of, of the same shade to, in create, to create those layers, and I found that fascinating. So I watched your videos right out of the gate as soon as I became an expert and knew, you know, really what Bloom TV had to offer, and I know you have some upcoming videos that I'll let you share about that. Um, before we go today. But when someone walks up to you and asks what you do, what do you tell them? How do you describe your work? That is a really good question. <laughs> I think up until today, I, I find, I, I actually think of myself as, I'm very humble about what I do because I think there is everything what I create is it's not perfect. And I feel sometimes a little bit shy. Like I'm not really an artist, but I am an artist because I also have a full-time job. So I like really shy away when people ask me that question and hearing all that feedback from you guys. And also when I talk to my followers on Instagram, mm -hmm. they give me the courage to say that I am an yes. artist, but also I don't want to live in the box of an artist because also art, being an artist and the journey that I decided to take is also my spiritual journey. And this is where I reintroduce myself to myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are absolutely an artist. Let me show you guys this watching today, just some examples of the paintings that she does. Now, I love this photo right here. Tell us a little bit about this photo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Um, so this is an upcoming tutorial. Uh, I was really thinking, like, what what is it that I can teach you? How to approach the flower from 
a little bit different angle. Mm -hmm. And then I, because I, I really, I think I Googled all, all the iris uh -huh. photos. I think like I just don't look the entire Google there. And I started looking for something interesting. And then I saw that very abstract photo and I decided, well, it could be an iris. It could be something else, but I don't really care. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when I created this tutorial to really study the smooth lines mm -hmm. because this is literally one piece of the whole iris flower mm -hmm. and purple I never can get enough of purple. Oh, like violet <laughs> I can relate to that feeling but I go towards the turquoise side and you do use a lot of blues you really really do you said that this is a spiritual experience for you can you talk talk a, le a little bit more about that uh, definitely um well probably that would be also a very long answer <laughs> <laughs> When I was in a high school, and I, I didn't like any special subjects. Like we were trained, like we we supposed to choose one subject uh, before we were going. And then I was like, okay, I don't like economics. I don't like law. I, I don't want to be a translator. I don't want to be whatever IT. And then psychology. I was like, well, let me see what it is about. Uh, up until today, my psychology teacher, she's like my lifetime mentor, my lifetime counselor, my lifetime friend. She's like a fairy uh, to me. And she was teaching us to draw, like draw a tree or mandalas. Um, they were like, she was using so many different techniques. And this is when I realized that I love mm -hmm. colors. Uh, I love how she interprets this. And this is when I, that was my first baby step toward understanding myself through, uh, through drawings, through paintings, through, through using like all the colors. Mm -hmm. And then I had a pause in my life mm -hmm. and um, my, my family, my dad, he's a physicist. Oh. My mom, she's a mathematician. Wow. So I, I feel like a black sheep. Oh. Wow. <laughs> and um, when I moved to Estonia, uh, and enter the, I started to study psychology. I thought this is what I want to do. And then I just, lucky coincidences, I reconnected with that need that I had since I was a little kid. Since I was a little kid, I wanted to paint. I was like doing like this and that, but my mom, she was so critical that she kind of like killed it in me. And in university in 2006, yeah. found a teacher. He was the sweetest professor of arts, of visual mm -hmm. arts. And when we started painting, I realized that it all comes not just from the necessity to visualize things and to really capture the beauty, mm -hmm. but this is me, this is my voice yeah. that needs to speak, my emotions that I want to analyze. And these two parts and how they merged in my journey. Yeah. And today, as I matured as an artist, I realized that the iris and how I came to it, mm -hmm. it's really like, one emotion we might think like oh happiness or mm, i don't know sadness it's like one emotion's pretty easy like you just feel sad but no when you get the color i get the color that it's associated with that emotion it opens up so many doors and so many different shades of that emotion and this is how i realized that that spiritual journey it's the most exciting journey i've been on and there are no dark emotions or light emotions. It's just a holistic, I'm a whole. Mm -hmm. I learned to appreciate both of them. Isn't so that amazing? I, I love hearing you talk about what we all love, and that's the flower. Mm -hmm. A flower. That's what we're talking about. And that's, of course, what the premises of Bloom TV is based on. So hearing you talk about that. And um, let's see a few more of her iris paintings. So those that are watching, yes. Um, my guess is, Daria, as an artist myself, um, who paints basically her emotions. I, I may do abstract one day. I may do a, a simple landscape the next day and both based on how I'm feeling. So I see so much discipline in your work. And I told you that earlier. I see, and you, you said, I don't really feel that way, but I see when I look at the lines and I look how you've done the monochromatic and I see discipline in your work. But my guess is through your journey, you haven't always painted irises it hasn't always been your core focus so i'm so curious how you got here to mm -hmm. the iris i'm curious of you know my guess is you you've painted you're inspired by nature i know this so mm -hmm. my guess is you've worked your way through there and this is just the season that you're in and the iris is your focus but how did you get to the iris that is a great question and i'm really glad that today i have an answer to that 
a long time ago, I was reading a book. I don't know if you guys, uh, this is, I think it's an American author, Irving Stone. So he is um, a non-fictional biographist. And he wrote a fantastic book that was about Van Gogh. And uh, the, the name of this book was Lost for Life. Uh -huh. I, I was reading it, funny enough, I was reading this book on my way from... Uh, from Rome to Florence, I was on a train, and I, I literally, I couldn't stop. I was like reading it <laughs> from breath. And Van Gogh's journey, part of his journey, he was so obsessed, and he so wanted to find his style. So uh -huh. all of his early works, they don't look like his later works. And he's so, he like this urge, and I, it contagious me. I felt like this is my ask, like the universe, please show me the way. Like, please help me get to the point where I would feel that is it. This is what I want to paint. Mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning, I was obsessed with forests because when I was a child, I was spending so much time in the countryside. And actually, mm -hmm. I'm going to show you. Please. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, trees. I was obsessed with forests and folks, and I thought I'm going to be a forest artist. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. Then I created this. Aha. Ooh. Completely different feeling than what you just showed us. And, yeah. and then I was like, well, it's all exciting. And then my sister, she asked me to paint something for her home. Like they just moved in to a new home with her husband. And I bought a book uh, with acrylic flowers. Um, and some of them, and there was one iris flower, also like closed up. And the moment when I started to paint, like to replicate it, to copy, it's, I fell in love. Like there is something magical in it, like the whole process, the smoothness of lines. And iris, in my opinion, is one of the most complex flowers. Mm -hmm. Just think about it. It's so big. It, it mm -hmm. needs all the juices, like the whole year, like one little, um, how do you call it? A, a stem, I guess. Um, and then it blooms. Yes. In absolutely gorgeous way. Oh, um, can I show you one of my favorite irises that bloomed this year? Because when I found out that you painted irises, I was like, oh, I have to show her my iris that bloomed yes, this year. Yes, please. Let, Let's let see me it. show you. So this is a photo. <gasps> Get out. Yeah, look at that. I mean, look how many oh. different colors there are in that. I can <laughs> smell it in the fragrance. I, I just right. feel this you know, it has so much character to it. It's like a dress. No, it's like a, it's like a dress. I mean, that's the beauty of the iris. And that's what I can't seem to get, Dari. I can't seem to get that the, the layers of, of like a ruffle. I, I haven't mastered that. And so when I look at your work, I'm like, oh, she's got it. She's got like this zoomed in 3D look where it's just coming off the page and you can smell it. But like what the picture Kara just showed, I look at that and think, it's majestic. Those, the, the iris flower, and it's interesting. I love the iris flower. That's not really the basis for I built my name. I told you I was a turquoise iris. Iris comes from my mother and my grandmother's. That's their middle name. And they are, of course, women that I find on, you know, on the pedestal. Um, so I use it as, as a reminder for strength when I look at, and I, I don't know what the meaning and I don't know if you do like the core meaning behind a flower. I feel like every flower has a meaning. Do you know what that is for the iris? Um, so there are, when I think about the iris as a flower, um, and I mentioned the complexity, like to me, it seems to be mm. a very complex flower and the associations that it triggered and the process when I was painting it. When I reflect to it, I feel that, when we're talking about the upper part of the flower, it's, it's literally like my heart. It's, 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 it contains, it's like hiding all of those emotions, but then you choose how it's going to look like on the outside. And then the emotions also, they float out in those petals that are opening up. And I feel like this is me. That's, that's my heart. And this is how my emotions floating out. Love that. <laughs> I do. I love that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I want to show this beautiful yellow iris painting that you painted right here. Now, That's not my favorite. 
that your Isn't favorite? Isn't that funny that that's not <laughs> your favorite? But Kara loves daffodils. So I know that yellow speaks to her heart. So we're drawn to certain flowers. We're drawn to certain paintings of yours because I'm drawn to the ones that have more of the blue and then your uh-huh. pink ones. But man, I watched on your Instagram you doing a red. I don't know if we have any of the red. Oh, I don't but have any red. If you guys are we, we could show the website. I mean, if you can. Yeah. Here's a pink. <laughs> that is that that pink one. I mean, there it's it's funny how we gravitate to more towards certain colors, but the yellow. Kara, what did you love about that yellow? What really was it the color or just I can just imagine it brightening up any room. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yellow just evokes happiness right here. But I loved that, you know, one of your videos on Bloom TV Network was about painting a yellow iris. Is this the same painting or is it different? Yes, yes. That's the one, uh, the tutorial that I had for this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So tell everybody that's watching us um, because we have been letting everyone know that we have a free month code to watch Bloom TV Network so they can get immersed in all the goodness of so many videos that are on there. What type of videos do you have on Bloom TV Network? So the videos that I'm having, those are approximately, I think, one hour long. I, I, I really like, get carried away with the tutorials <laughs> and also make sure that everybody has enough of patience to follow me. Um, I don't, I really don't aim towards perfection. So what I have is just like a large paper and I want to take you all on a journey with me how I approach this process. It's not even about the final painting because mm-hmm. there could be so much work could be done, but to feel confident and excited about one particular color. And this is because one color is one emotion and it yeah. can be deep with so many shades. And I just want to take you on that journey with me when I talk through what it means to me, how uh, how I feel when I try this or that shade. If I feel like, oh, something is missing here. And then I just calm myself down because I know that I can fix it. I can experiment. There is nothing scary about it. So I'm trying to combine all of these uh, into one tutorial and just to have it as a colorful journey uh, towards your emotions and also to uh, to help you create maybe something that you're going to have on your wall at some I, point. I and can't wait. You- I'm excited. I need a note that said she's got more videos coming because I'm yeah. a mental note. You know, if you write it down, you're going to remember. So I'm going to be looking on my on Bloom. Um, there's a psychology behind every color. You know, we know that in our in our branding, we know that in our in our feelings. And if I ever have artist block, I will kind of get myself out of it and shake myself up by using the colors that I gravitate towards the most, the ones that speak to my heart, like turquoise. Yours seems to be purple. So can you tell us what the psychology is behind purple and the color of the shades that go with that? Oh, definitely. So purple, I feel it's one of the most mysterious colors. Um, And probably, and this is where it's really hard to tell. It's like chicken and an egg. Uh, Is this the complexity that we've added in our minds? Or actually by nature, it's a very complex color. Uh, Of course, when we look into the history, that was the color of royalties because it was a very expensive pigment. It was really hard to create it. But when I think about the physics of this color, and also when we mix it up, it's blue and red the totally opposite colors. And I feel like purple makes me feel exactly the same way. Like, am I passionate? Do I feel warmth? Or actually I feel cold, I feel calmness um, and like on a cooler side. And that complexity, uh, when I'm painting with this color, I feel that that's exactly like the two opposite emotions that I'm experiencing. And when I'm working with shades, I discovered that actually purple has cold shade and a warm shade. And when you, for probably from a viewer's eye, you cannot really tell that, oh, this is cold, this is warm, it's just purple. But when I create, I instantly feel how this minor difference, how that affects my emotions and how that smooth shift is happening. So that increases my self-awareness I don't know to what level and I'm really like I'm so into that and I just get 
crazy when I when I sense that, especially like those little moments of swishing. Like, uh huh, there it is. This is a right shade. I got it. I got oh, it. Isn't that the best? That is yeah. a good feeling. So, do you plan when you start a white canvas? Do you plan your colors, or do you just? Is it more of a spiritual? Do you you know? meditate with the canvas. I know a lot of artists who pray over the canvas before they begin. Um, what does your process look like? And mm -hmm. do you, how do you deal also with artist block? That's, that's a good one. Um, because, because painting is really, I want to connect with myself mm -hmm. because every day I, I, we don't talk to ourselves that much. We are so distracted by everything, all the information, work, whatnot. So when I'm in my studio, in my space, I just pull all the photos that I have and I start scrolling, scrolling through, scrolling through until my heart will resonate like, ah, oh, Daria, that one, that photo. And photo gives me, it's like my guiding light. Um, I would see blue iris or purple and I would feel like, oh, that's the intensity I, I want to experience right now. And then I get it as my, uh, yeah, as my guiding light. And then I will dive very deep into that pow uh, into that uh, color and, of course, the intensity. Like the photo versus my painting, they would look totally different. But that's that's when I teach myself to really like open up my heart and really connect. Like, please speak to me. Just talk to me. Tell me how you feel and where you want to go. And that's how I start. And during the process, so there is one painting. Um, uh, I wish I could. It's, uh, I didn't send it over to you, but it's on my website. Um, it's a lizarin. And it's a very, I, I consider it like it's one of the most precious artworks that I have created. And, oh, actually, let's let's do blue painting that you showed. Uh, okay. Uh, the blue one. Uh, yes, this one. And so the journey behind that one. <laughs> It's just when stunning. I, I love it. I'm obsessed. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it was it was very unexpected journey. I thought it would be just like light blue, you know, calm, mm -hmm. and I would enjoy the process. And when finally I finished it, uh, and stepped aside, and I figured that, well, this is a, a dangerous painting, because if you see, it's very tranquil on the outside, but then there is this purple depth, and I realized that. I'm scared. Is this wh where does it take me? Does it take me to to the hell or whatever we would call it, mm -hmm. or actually it invites me to something warm? Mm -hmm. But it's the first one. And the thing is, I was painting that work when I was listening to "Ecstasy and Agony." I think that's the name of the book by Irving Stone about Michelangelo. And I realized that well, sometimes I surprise myself. Like there is a message that I'm just translating wow. into a canvas, and still it's a mystery wow. to me. Who wants to tell me? So do that's you so listen? powerful. Yeah. Do you normally listen to audiobooks when you paint? Or are you more of a listen to music? Which one do you like? Uh, I'm an audiobook. I that was a very interesting discovery for me when I started listening to audiobooks. They take mm -hmm. me on a journey, and mm -hmm that's how I distract myself from my own thoughts. So I kind yeah. of shut, shut my thoughts down. I let my intuition do the job. And also I'm listening to another story. So of course the book has to resonate. Like I have to be really curious about it. Right. Um, and there are a lot of paintings that I can tell exactly what part of the book I was listening to while I was working on that little piece. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, I love that. I resonate with that too. Like I found myself, um, I make a lot of Christmas reset uh, Christmas time out of fresh materials. And I love to listen to audiobooks or podcasts because I just feel like um, I love just hearing what they have to say. And I feel like I fall into this world of what they are saying. So I connect with that too. And I wanted to say we have lots of people in the chat. Um, someone says, Daria, we can see the difference in your work between the warm and the cool purples. I'm loving your Instagram. Oh, thank and you. yes, um, a lot of comments right here. Um, let's see here. Someone said, did she say Alizar, Alizarin? Is that what it is? Alizarin? Yeah, yeah Alizarin. Um, it's this, it, it's the name of the pigments of one of the red pigments. It's very, very intense and dark. Um, 
And there is a whole philosophy, not philosophy, but a big story behind that artwork. Oh, yes. is this it? Yes, that's the one. That's my baby. <laughs> that looks like a I photo. see why. <laughs> I'm almost like there's so much femininity in it, but it's fire. It is like. Mm -hmm. It's dangerous. It's, yeah. Like that, that like. <laughs> woo, woo <-wee. laughs> um, tell me about oils, because I know that probably as well as this journey has you've, you've probably done watercolor and acrylic and is 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 there a reason for the oil can you tell us why that's your chosen medium oh definitely i, I was honestly like dion i was so scared to try oils i was like it's only for professional artists i'm not professional so i won't touch them yeah um first i started with watercolors acrylics seem to be very easy they dry fast they're very forgiving so you can fix your uh, your errors pretty quickly and then I thought okay I need to try oils I'm super afraid but I'll try and this is when I realized that Daria why you've been waiting for so long uh, <laughs> I'm worried that's gonna happen to me <laughs> the texture acrylics cannot even come close to the intensity of pigments and juiciness uh, of oils and oil Paints really taught me patience and to focus on the process instead of the result. So I stopped being obsessed with the result. And I started really focusing on like trying to see, sometimes I create a mess. I would mix totally unmixable shades and I was like, this is a mess. Okay, I need to just like clean my, clean my paper, clean my canvas and just throw it away. But when, when I start mixing them and because the variety is so huge, there, there is one painting, it's called Magenta. Um, it's it's a combination of magenta shades and pink and purple. And the photo had such tremendous, it was such a gorgeous shade and I wanted to replicate it. I wanted to get that to that moment. And only with oils, I was able to do that. Uh, I had the same pigment just from different brands. And then I was mixing and mixing every day. I was mixing and mixing and I couldn't find it. And then finally I found that shade. I was like, my God, as, as if I heard a magic formula. Of sorts. And ever since like that, they dry so slow and mm -hmm. oils allow me to create multiple like layer after layer, even if it's blue layer on top of blue, yeah. but still they start to play and you see how they're playing with each other. And you let it dry. And when even they halfway through um, the drying phase, that gives me an ability to add a fresh layer. And it's still, it would mix up and would stick to that previous layer. So it's just such a joyful process. And with acrylics, I need to rush. Like I no longer can enjoy because I'm, I need to rush. It's, it's going to dry. And also the, the, the colors fade away when I'm working with acrylics as well. I think that's... Again, why I'm so drawn to your work, because I see such discipline in your work. And I'm going to keep telling you that, because that's what I see. And that's where I lack, because I do want to rush through it. I want it to dry quickly. I want to move quickly. And it. I'm looking forward to the time in my process that I will be able to slow down and to um, be able to work on the more delicate flow, like your iris leaves, their petals. They're just... Your work is so stunning. Um, I'm curious if imposter syndrome, you mentioned your, your parents um, definitely chose a different route for their lifestyle and, um, or for their, for their career. Did imposter syndrome ever feel something that was real to you? Um, I think so. Yes. Um, especially that in my culture and where I come from, like imposter syndrome, it seems to be like the most recent term or something that we started to really recognize mm -hmm. and probably it was there but i could never recognize it like still i'm an artist am i am i an artist but yeah like i'm i'm not really an artist but yeah. then well i define who it you is are. right right <laughs> yes you define what it is and what art is and whether you're an artist or not um, but i can assure you you are and the way we look at your work and what you know whether you feel that way that's that is completely something that is personal. Um, but we see the the beautiful and the intricate details and the roughly like with Kara's 
Kara's flower. I mean, you can just walk into Kara's garden and you could, you would love it, Daria. Um, she's a cut grower and it is amazing. She will post videos on her Instagram of the morning and on the farm. And she also, you know, there's, there's children playing and it is um, also, I would use it the same way. A morning sunrise at Kara's farm is majestic. It's the same type of feeling that I, I get when I look at your work. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. That's really, oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. It's very, it's just, it's just, absolutely. One last time, let's show, I believe, uh, Monica got this uploaded for us. Here's the gorgeous red painting that we're talking about right there. And I have, I have one more question for you. Um, would you say that painting is a meditative process for you? 100%. Two hundred percent. It's definitely a meditative process. And um, when I started, when I rented the first studio back when I was living in St. Petersburg, uh, literally people would find me in two places, either in the office or in the studio. I would just, I would lock myself up during the weekend. I could paint for eight, 10 hours in a row. Um, and I think also, this is also very funny because I think oil painting was like telling me, well, Daria, we need to dry now. So you can no longer paint. So go home. I was like, <laughs> I'll just go home now. And then the yeah. next day I would just come back and uh, paint again. And definitely I, I feel so so much happier after I paint because again, I think, and also this, this is an open question. Is it because I reconnect with myself and I really let all my emotions to be on the canvas. So I, I see my inner side, the side that I otherwise cannot see and cannot talk to. Um, or is it because of the process when I'm just being the moment and I forget about anything else. So I'm like in my own bubble. Um, so yeah, definitely. And, uh, and I, I did have some individual workshops, um, like some friends would come over or, uh, somebody heard over her that I'm doing this. So they would just join me in the studio and I see how scared they were to start painting because, Oh, mm -hmm. well, we did this when we were kids. I was like, no, don't be afraid. I will help you. And they were just like little kids, like totally <laughs> into the process and that happiness and that smile and I felt like they become so much lighter so with that painting with communicating with themselves they they got uplifted so definitely meditative process and I would encourage anyone to take any pencil whatever what you like and just get there I love that that's so beautiful I love that with teaching as well but Daria I was I just kind of had this thought while you were speaking and I'm gonna see if it makes sense I don't know if I can describe it because I've never had this thought before or made this realization, but with doing oils, the way you mentioned your, your paintings were speaking to you and saying, go home, I need to dry. So your paintings have layers of emotions because you're in one emotion one day and you may come back or, or throughout the day, if you're like me, every hour it changes possibly. But the next day or the next two days you come back in and you, you may have a different emotion that you bring to the painting. And so the oils are layered, the colors are layered, the shades of the same tone, but there's so much emotion also. And I think that was what makes it so incredibly unique. So with me, when the acrylic, I usually, all one emotion is in one painting because I get finished with it quickly. Mm -hmm. And that's another difference between our work that I find really, really interesting about that. And something that I look forward to one of these days um, being able to, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to experimenting with oils. Um, but I need to mature more <laughs> <laughs> emotionally and, and artistically. That's what I'm looking forward to. So I have absolutely enjoyed this conversation. Yes. Thank you so much, Daria, for being here with us today. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure and reading all the comments. Um, uh, yes. like my inner child is extremely happy right now. Like, Oh, I love it. I'm so glad you saw them because, yes, they were like, you're an artist. Amazing, amazing paintings, Daria. Gorgeous. Yes. Thank you Thank so you much. So You've inspired a lot of people today. You have. <laughs> you guys, she has lots of it. She has three videos that she's working on that are going to be coming out soon on bloomtvnetwork.com. So I, for one, will be first in line 
watching yeah. those videos as soon as those are on. Um, the beauty of that, you all, is that we are still running our special on Bloom TV. So you can actually get one month free by using the code FLOWERS at bloomtvnetwork.com. So you just subscribe to our newsletter and that enters you to win. Um, I think what amazing opportunity because we have hundred over well over a hundred experts. We have hundreds of videos and Daria is um, one. She's under the artist section and I encourage you all to get over there today. Um, enjoy your weekend. You're going to be inspired. No doubt. Yes. Thank you so much, Daria. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so Have much. Have a wonderful weekend, friend. <laughs> All oh, right. She's lovely. That was, I mean, I'm inspired now. I feel, I feel like I need to try to paint an iris. <laughs> I, oh, I hope you I'm do. I'm going to plant a lot more irises. I actually just planted more irises earlier this week because right now is a great time to plant in the fall. Guess what? what? I, I, I can't believe I didn't tell you guys this. Oh. I received in the mail oh. two, four white irises that were once in Monet's garden. Oh, they, like the bulbs? The bulbs. I have bulbs. And I need to plant them this week. That was on my to-do list. Yes. They were they were planted and 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 long story, but I didn't buy them. They were they were given. They were were offered to me and in uh -huh. the most generous way from a generous yeah. person. So I'm gonna I've never even planted iris bulbs. So I will be reaching out to you, my friend, who is my okay. expert. Um, my expert that I will be going to about irises, but I, they're from Monet's garden. Yes. I love it. Irises are the gift that keeps on giving because once you plant one, they multiply pretty rapidly. Like within like the first three years, it's a good idea to dig them up, um, divide them and you can share them again. That's why I got them. I'm assuming that's why I got them, but, um, yeah. I was, I'm so excited. So hopefully this time next year or in the spring, I will be able to show you Look at my white irises will be Hopefully. my first. A little key tip about planting irises, only plant them like a third of the way deep. Like you don't, sub, you don't bury the whole iris bulb. You um, don't? Don't bury the whole thing. You actually leave the top part of it um, exposed. I know it sounds odd. Yeah, I have a planting video. I will send it to you because I did one for a company once. <laughs> Please. I'm going to need that because I don't want to get it wrong this week. Like when I'm going to try to do that this week and I don't want to get it wrong. It's really yeah. important to me, but oh, I have four of them. Yeah. Thank you. Thank irises, you. Ir irises are hard to mess up. You just want to make sure they don't rot. That's the only thing. Um, and that's why we kind of leave a lot of the bulb exposed. But yeah, okay. we'll get that sent to you. And we need to talk about um, another book that we are featuring today on our show. Yeah, yeah. If we've got guys... a book by Laura Reed, you guys. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. We've got a video for you too. But Schiffer, um, you know, we have a book club. Because yeah, we've got we everything at Bloom TV Network. We got all the things. Yes. <laughs> we have all the things. Um, this week <laughs> is about paper flowers. And let's mm -hmm. play a little video clip of Laura Reed's new book. Yeah, check it out, ladies. The book is called Blooming Paper. Um, and it's sort of, um, it's quite methodical because that's the way my brain works. <laughs> so the very be the beginning of the book, I go through um, how to, what different tools you might need to use. So it's got lots of information about tools. And then I talk, about I don't remember which order it's all in techniques so different ways of um for example you can see the different ways of folding leaves and petals to get different effects and shapes and then there's um a chapter about of sort of practice flowers which are kind of quite simple and it just it, you sort of go through all the different methods of forming petals and applying them to actual flowers and then the main body of the book really is um, the individual flowers. Oh yeah, there's a section about how to design your own flower as well. Um, yeah, the main body of the book is sort of really practicing lots of different flowers. They're quite realistic, but a little bit sort of simplified, but still recognizable as specific species of flowers sort of thing. Um, I sort of wrote it for people who have never done f like paper flower crafting and people who are kind of quite crafty but haven't really done very much of it and want to kind of push themselves further. So you don't have to have had any experience, but it's not. It's also not so basic that if you are you are quite creative naturally, it's not boring, if you see what I mean. Um, so it's kind of um, for, 
emerging crafters, I suppose, or people who've got the craft already, but but you can start right from the basics if you've never done anything like it before. My name is Laura Reed. My website is laurareeddesign.co.uk and my handles are also Laura Reed Design on everything. <laughs> have the QR code and um, we have a whole list of books. You guys have seen some of our other authors. I, for one, always go and I have a, a list. So when it's time for a new book, I have tons of floral books. Um, I keep an ongoing list and I'm like, I'll have to save this for later. Um, but I have my list. And so it's really nice to be able to have that reference, isn't it, Kara? Absolutely. And you know, the world of paper flowers, I follow a couple of paper flower florists on Instagram. Yeah. It's amazing how they can make them look so realistic and the time that it must take to create these flowers. You've got to have a lot of patience, I think. Yep. I that's another I thing <laughs> that I need to grow up and learn. I need to grow up and learn that as well. Um, I know that we have something really spooky coming up, Kara. Right. Yeah, we do. We have the <laughs> TV Halloween competition. That is coming up, and anyone is allowed to enter this competition. And look, first place is a thousand dollar cash prize. What? Like, wow, who would not want to win that? So, first place for entering thousand dollar cash prize, you get a year gift certificate to Bloom TV and a uh, six month subscriptions to Details, uh, which is a florist program. And then, second place, five hundred dollars, third place, two hundred fifty, and a couple other things too. Wow. And so all you need to do is um, you can submit a video of you creating something Halloween. Here's all the details right here. Yep. All the details are on Bloom TV Network. And I believe um, if you could incorporate lilies in your Halloween design, that's like really good, um, really oh. good to do. Something very, a special flower to incorporate. But all the details are on bloomtvnetwork.com. You have until, what was the date? I think it said um, October 6th was it or no, the, the workshop is on October 12th. 6th, but you have till the 12th, 12th to enter. Okay. Yeah. So get on that a thousand dollars, 500 and two fifty. I mean, three yeah. people are winning something pretty fierce there. And I believe you get a whole annual sub a gift subscription, yeah. a whole annual. So that's pretty, pretty impressive. Hello, everybody. I see some of you still popping on. We see you and we are so grateful that you are enjoying our weekly show with 23 episodes under our belt. There is so much to learn. You can still go to Bloom TV Network every single week and catch the replay. So if you started or if you're popping on late, um, Daria is a extremely talented artist. She centers her work around the iris flower. And we at Bloom and all of us are obsessed with flowers, aren't we? That's kind of that's kind of what we do here. Um, yeah. I we also have um, the Halloween workshop that we're doing with six Bloom TV experts. Let's show them a little graphic of that right oh, here. Oh, absolutely. Yes. These are some of our guests we've also had on our show mm -hmm. um, over the last few weeks. Yes. Yes. So you guys can sign up to view this workshop on bloomtvnetwork.com. And they are going to be- And that's free, right? Um, I think you have to be a Bloom TV subscriber. I do believe. Um, okay. But bloomtvnetwork.com will tell you all the information that you need to know about that. But it is a fun workshop with these um, six Bloom TV experts. And um, got it. they have different uh, Halloween themed things that they're going to show you. Like I know Carrie, I believe is going to talk about, you know, like some healthy, here we go. Healthy, uh, healthy alternative for kids. Halloween treats with Carrie Luce. Uh, Lori's going to make an art filled pumpkin and Holly is going to show you how she does some spooky home decor. Christy Belk is going to make blood orange margaritas with a floral salt rim. What? I want to watch that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sydney's cocktails and drink labels DIY for a spectacular night. And then Anna uh, is going to make quick herbal infused witch hazel toner. Ooh, that sounds, sounds really neat. Guys, right there. I mean, let's get real. You can only get that here. Like you yeah. can only get that at Bloom TV. You just can't right. go walking in any grocery store and getting that kind of information. Right. So <laughs> yes. So actually, so you do have to be a Bloom TV subscriber to watch that whole workshop, but we have the free month code. If you yeah, guys use the it. free month code of flowers and you'll be able to participate in all of the fun things that we're doing in October. I mean, like I said, you can't get this anywhere. Like, yes. Right, right, right. So fun. So 
Dion, we had another fabulous show today. Learned Aww. so much again. Um, just one of my favorite things to do every Friday is to be on with you and Anna and our guest. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really always so happy to be able to be here Friday and talk about something that we're all so in love with, and that is the flower. We're going to take this opportunity to thank all of our sponsors at Bloom TV. We're going to play a little video, and we're going to come back to say goodbye. So don't sign off just yet. <laughs> We have built the world's first flower-focused streaming network, bringing the public educational and entertaining shows that highlight the magic of flowers. Learn how to heal through flowers, cook with flowers, design your living space to reflect nature, make crafts using florals, sustainably garden, and so much more. We are your network for all things floral. Join us at Bloom TV as we help bring beauty to the lives of people and the planet through nature's most beautiful creation, the flower. I want to take this personal opportunity through here to say for all of you in the path of the hurricane who have been affected, who are still still struggling with all of this, we just want you to know that you're in our thoughts um, and that we're thinking about you um, and we just pray that you stay safe. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys so much for being here today. Everyone, um, Dion. We missed Anna. We missed Anna. But guess what? We have something really fun coming up for you next week. So make sure you put it on your calendar, set your alarm, whatever you got to do, and make sure that you're here for next week's. Um, I'm not even. I'm not even going to say what the word is, but I'm just going to tell you it's going to be really fun. It's going to be something a little different than what we've done before. Um, so we will see you then. And you know what, Kara, tell them why they should tune here every single Friday. More importantly. Because everything is better with flowers and friends. Thank That's you. right, everybody.